Throughout this series, we have explored extinction events that completely disrupted the planet. Yes, extinction is a fact of life, but these were not typical. They eliminated complete ecosystems, made certain areas inhospitable, all due to factors that came with a changing planet on a large scale, or by weird chance events. But now, you're faced with a new kind of mass extinction, one caused by the development of only one species, us. Right now, rates of extinction are so high that we might be on the verge of a modern mass extinction. Experts predict that by 2050, about half of all species could be threatened with extinction. And because of that, the mass extinction we're currently entering has been dubbed the Anthropocene mass extinction. In this series, we've explored the causes and effects of the Big Five, one by one to lay out what we know about mass extinctions of the past so we can prevent another one. In this final episode, we're taking stock of the state of our modern world and the biodiversity crisis that some have started calling the sixth mass extinction. <laughs> Sixty-six million years ago, an asteroid the size of Mount Everest crashed into the Earth, kicking off a chain of disasters that destabilized ecosystems all over the world and caused the extinction of about 75% of the species that lived on the planet. That was the most recent mass extinction. It marked the end of the Age of Reptiles and the beginning of the Cenozoic Era, the Age of Mammals. Since then, the world has continued to change. Our modern continents and oceans have taken shape, and so have modern ecosystems. Familiar habits like rainforests and grasslands have spread out around the globe. And as time went on, the Earth gradually cooled giving rise to our modern tundras and frozen poles. These habitats have been home to a wide diversity of plants and animals, the descendants of the species that survived the last mass extinction. The Cenozoic era has seen the evolution of giant sharks like Megalodon, massive colonies of ants and termites, and predatory birds like Titanus, which were taller than me. And of course, lots of mammals. Whales moved into the seas, and bats took to the skies. Rodents became some of the most abundant mammals on Earth, while groups like elephants and bears became the largest herbivores and carnivores on land. And one lineage, primates, eventually gave rise to us. Our direct ancestors, the earliest hominins like Sahelanthropus, show up in the fossil record about 7 million years ago, several million years before the onset of the Pleistocene Ice Age. Around 300,000 years ago, toward the end of the Ice Age, we find the earliest signs of our own species, Homo sapiens. And by 10,000 years ago, as the Ice Age came to a close, we find archaeological evidence of the rise of agriculture and modern civilization. Since then, human population and technology have grown drastically, and so has the impact we have on the world around us. If there are paleontologists in the distant future, they're going to find signs of human activity all over the planet, in every ecosystem. We've changed the world so radically that some scientists have proposed that we live in a new geologic age, the Anthropocene epoch. Anthro means humans. While other geologic time periods are identified by changes brought on by tectonic processes and long-term evolutionary shifts, the Anthropocene would be identified by the changes caused by us. Among the most obvious of those changes, unfortunately, is extinction. There are a lot of famous examples of animals that have been recently driven extinct by human action like the dodo birds of Mauritius, thylacines in Tasmania, passenger pigeons in North America. There are a lot of other species that are famously endangered, like Sumatran rhinos, Wallamy pines, and giant pandas. But that's just a handful of examples that doesn't really capture the scale of our impact. In fact, even scientists struggle to estimate how much extinction is actually happening. It's tricky because we don't exactly know how many species there are on Earth. Most estimates say a few million at least. We also don't see every extinction that happens. Lots of species are very small or very rare, or live in secluded habitats. If their environments are destroyed, those species might die out before we ever knew they were there. But scientists have come up with ways to estimate extinction rates. With surveys of wildlife in various habitats, researchers can make estimates of how many species might live in different regions. By studying patterns of habitat loss and wildlife population declines, they can estimate how many species might be disappearing worldwide. Paleontology is important for this too. From the fossil record, we can estimate the typical rates of extinction in between mass extinction events. Putting it all together, the resulting estimates are not good. Repeated studies have found that extinction rates in the last few centuries are hundreds to thousands of times higher than normal background extinctions. That means hundreds to thousands of species extinctions each year. If we just look at vertebrates, animals with bony skeletons, over 600 species have gone extinct since the 1500s that we know of. And beyond those, there are insects, worms, snails, plants, fungi, and lots more that are way harder to study and keep track of. And even among the species that haven't gone extinct, many of them are experiencing major declines. Conservationists estimate that somewhere around one-fourth to one-third of all living species are currently in serious danger of extinction. If this trend continues, experts predict that we could see a full half of all modern species go extinct by 2050. This is where the idea of the sixth extinction comes from. These numbers are unlike any time in the history of our planet. 
except for the big five mass extinctions. And the environment is changing in similar ways to those events too, with the destruction of worldwide habitats and the collapse of food webs. But a mass extinction doesn't happen for no reason. In the previous episodes of this series, we've explored lots of things that can cause global ecological devastation. Millennia of continuous volcanic eruptions, massive asteroid impacts, the splitting of a supercontinent. But none of that stuff is happening right now. The only major change that lines up with all of this modern extinction is us. Humans have altered ecosystems for thousands of years. Our ancestors hunted wildlife or in forests, carried invasive species of bugs and plants to new parts of the world. But over the past few centuries, we've upgraded in huge ways. Our hunting and fishing efforts now happen on industrial scale, causing major declines to wild population. For example, experts estimate that 85% of the world's fisheries are currently catching more fish than the environment can handle. We clear entire habitats to make room for our cities and farmlands. In just the last 20 years, almost 10% of the Amazon rainforest has been cut down by human effort. And there are similar trends all around the globe. As we move from place to place, we carry invasive species that devastate ecosystems. Cane toads in Australia have caused huge declines in native predators. Chestnut blight in North America almost completely wiped out American chestnut trees. And feral cats cause massive losses of wildlife all over the world. That's just to name a few. And on top of all of that, we produce insane amounts of fossil fuel emissions, which have caused carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere to skyrocket. This is a trend we've seen in lots of previous mass extinctions. CO2 is a greenhouse gas, traps heat in the atmosphere. Rising CO2 levels lead to warmer global temperatures and ocean acidification that scientists have been observing in recent decades. But unlike previous mass extinctions, there are no volcanoes or asteroids responsible for this rise in CO2. Instead, our own activities are the cause. When we look at ecosystems today, we see patterns that are disturbingly similar to the mass extinctions of the past. Just like in the past, the largest species are some of the hardest hit, since they require more resources to survive. Elephants, rhinos, whales, and most of our other large species are endangered. Also, like in the past, we're seeing major declines in corals and plants. These species are highly sensitive to changing environments, and they form the foundations of their ecosystems. So when they suffer, entire communities suffer with it. All of this is tragic, not only because millions of unique and beautiful animals are at risk, but because we are too. We rely on other species as our sources of food, medicine, and other resources. As our planet becomes less healthy, it results in resource scarcity and economic losses for us. But, there's good news. This isn't a true mass extinction yet. So far, the percentage of global extinctions isn't as bad as past mass extinction events. And most of the extinctions we're seeing are individual species rather than entire families or orders of life. Many ecosystems are struggling, but they can still recover if given the chance. We're on the path to a mass extinction, but we can still change course. And the best news is that because this is our fault, we also have the power to stop it. In a human-driven extinction event, there are human-driven solutions. Already, organizations around the world are establishing protections and regulations to safeguard vulnerable ecosystems from pollution, overhunting, and habitat loss. Breeding programs aim to restore declining populations, and reintroduction plans can put displaced species back into their native habitats. Colossal is a company focused on biotechnology and the science of de-extinction. These tools can bring species back Back from the brink of extinction and even beyond. In some cases, this can help bolster populations of endangered species. In others, we might be able to introduce keystone species into damaged habitats. Herbivores are predators that play crucial ecological roles and can restore balance to collapsing ecosystems. These efforts are already showing early results. Colossal's work on thylacines hasn't brought these extinct mammals back to life just yet, but the genetic technology developed for this project led to a technique that protects Australia's native quolls against deadly cane toad toxins. The same technology is also contributing to efforts to combat chytrid fungal disease, which is devastating amphibian populations worldwide. Geologists and paleontologists have put together incredible amounts of information about ecological disasters in Earth's history, and biologists and conservationists are collecting more and more data about the state of our modern environments. This makes us unique. Unlike the volcanoes and asteroids of the distant past, we know what's happening, and we know why it's happening, and we have the knowledge and technology to stop it. This is the final episode in a six-part series on mass extinctions. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, check them out here on Colossal's YouTube channel, and you can go to Colossal's website to learn more about their work to save life on Earth. See ya!